Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to another episode of one of my how-to videos. Uh, I've done a number of videos so far, if you haven't checked them out already. Uh, how to play Warhammer 40,000, and that's for 9th edition, the current edition of Warhammer uh, 40,000. And then I've done another video as well called How to Win, games of Warhammer 40,000 as well. Uh, obviously, the point of the hobby is to have fun, uh, but it's nice to, to win games. Uh, and as long as everyone enjoys uh, playing, you know, it's not a case of win at all costs, but uh, check out that video uh, for some tips of how to win your games at 40k, especially perhaps you've been on a losing streak or you're struggling to adjust to 9th edition uh, or you're new to the game. Uh, there's a certain way to play 9th edition that can really help you win uh, your games of Warhammer 40,000. So you can check out those two videos, they're already available, and I do plan to make some more how to videos uh, revolving around Warhammer 40,000 in the near future. So in this particular video here, uh, again uh, with the video I made about how to play Warhammer 40,000, I was thinking about people who are trying to adjust over to 9th edition from previous editions, uh, or for those who are brand new into the hobby and uh, perhaps intimidated by the rules. I certainly was when I first started uh, Warhammer 40,000, that's back when I was about 14, whilst I was at secondary school. Uh, so for this video, I thought what I'd do is share uh, I've got some tips and really it's revolving around my own journey into Warhammer 40,000, how I got into the hobby uh, and the different steps along the way because it was an enjoyable process uh, over a, a, a quite a long period of time but it was an enjoyable process and uh, it has kept me in the hobby as well. There's many people that dive into Warhammer 40,000 and then they dive back out again. So uh, the route that I went down uh, was uh, it's not the quickest, but it's meant that I've kept the hobby going for a long, long time now. I've been uh, playing Warhammer 40,000 across most of the editions uh, and still very much enjoying the hobby. So that's what I wanted to keep it that way. Enjoyment is one of the big factors. Uh, but how do you actually start getting into Warhammer 40,000 and avoiding some of the mistakes and some of the things that can actually put you off the hobby? Um, so I'm going to try and share as much as I can with you to help you as perhaps you start your own journey into uh, Warhammer 40,000. So I'm going to presume, uh, and you might be a few stages further ahead of this, but I'm, I'm going to presume that you are at the point of uh, thinking about getting into Warhammer 40,000. You've got no models, uh, there's no paints, no brushes, no previous experience of Warhammer 40,000 or any kind of wargaming at all, and uh, so completely uh, fresh. Uh, and considering perhaps getting into the hobby. So, I mean, everyone's been at that stage at some point, uh, considering getting in uh, to the hobby. So I was at that point, uh, so you know, I'll go all the way back. So I've always had an interest in tactics and warfare and so on. You know, it started with all the war films uh, growing up. Uh, I always liked that historical war films, fantasy stuff as well. So that interest was always there. Uh, and then getting into tabletop, uh, war game, or going even further back than that, I first started painting up uh, toy soldiers, just like Napoleonic toy soldiers. I uh, enjoyed painting those, very, very basic. This is when I was going all the way back to sort of eight, nine, ten years old. I uh, really enjoyed constructing airfix kits, uh, model jets, and helicopters, and biplanes, and so on. I used to paint them up and then even hung them up on a string in my, in my bedroom. Uh, and I was quite proud of all the different aeroplanes that I had painted up. My dad used to help me and so on uh, with uh, getting into the hobby from sort of a model making perspective. So that was the first beginnings there. So maybe you have a similar kind of position where you have an interest in that kind of thing, you know, military 
uh, history wargaming and films and fantasy films and Lord of the Rings and all those kind of things uh, and that can then start as that can be like a springboard to get further uh, into wargaming and military modeling and so on so that's how I started initially uh, and then sort of getting into 40k came along later so this brings me on to the first point um, and what I'm trying to show you is a way of getting into the hobby without diving in and it costing you too much if you come back out of the hobby again. I've seen a lot of people uh, and heard s stories of people where they have jumped right into the hobby. They've spent hundreds of pounds uh, and then they packed it in as quick as they started it and then they, they never want to go anywhere near Warhammer 40,000 again. It just wasn't for them, didn't want to carry on, uh, but it's cost them a lot a lot of wasted time and disappointment. So I'm trying to construct a way here to show you you can get into the hobby uh, without that happening. So point number one uh, is, it might, might surprise you, uh, no rule books, no codexes, uh, no models, no paints. I would encourage you to pick up something very, very basic from Warhammer 40,000. Perhaps go into a Games Workshop store uh, or somewhere else that sells the White Dwarf magazine and start with that. That's how I started, just picked up the magazine going to cost you a few pounds uh, and then just flick through that. So that, that gives you a, an idea of um, battle reports, models that are available, different uh, types uh, of games available from Games Workshop. You may end up not going into 140k, you might want to play Age of Sigmar, one of the smaller uh, specialist games. You may end up being a great Blood Bowl fan. But uh, the best way to find out is to browse before you buy. Now. It's, uh, staff in a store may not encourage you to, <laughs> to do that, they may, may want you to buy a load of stuff and that can end up putting you off from the hobby, so that's how I started. Uh, a friend of mine at school, uh, in our technology class, he brought in one of the rule books from Warhammer 40,000 second edition, uh, and it was just the rule book. Uh, we didn't talk about the rules, he, just showed, it just, I used to, he brought it in, I saw the front cover, I was inspired by the artwork, for just thought it looked really, really good, no idea about Warhammer 40k, uh, and then he used to slide the book across to me during class and I used to look through uh, the book and it was the there was the artwork and the pictures I used to love looking through uh, the fantastic artwork. So that's how it began and you know it cost me, well it didn't cost me anything because I borrowed the book uh, from my friend uh, and then from there I got a couple of the games I actually used to produce like a full colour brochure of the model kits that were available from them. Uh, and that was didn't cost anything. I used to flick through that and used to say, oh, that model looks really cool, I'd love to paint that model. And it was always, I was on the fringe for a good while, uh, but that just built an interest. And as time goes by, the interest either goes away or it remains. And so it remained for me. And so it's a good way to confirm. You might look for a, a, a White Dwarf magazine, you say, no, nah, actually I don't really like the idea of it. And then you just put the magazine down and that's it and you walk away. But it has been at no cost to you. Um, so I'd encourage you to go down that route. And this is presuming you're right at the fringes here of Warhammer 40,000. Don't worry about what everyone else is up to and big battle reports and big games taking place and people seem to know the rules really well. That's miles down the line for you and so I'd encourage you instead just to uh, browse at this stage uh, and enjoy doing so. I just love look, looking through uh, White Dwarf magazine. In fact I remember going away on a holiday with mum and dad uh, and I used to uh, I subscribed to White Dwarf magazine, used to really, really look forward to it coming through the post, used to flick through it. We went on holiday, I took the magazine with me and I had my uh, uh, sheets of paper and, and set of pencils and I used to copy and draw out some of the artwork, just from any type of artwork that I liked from the White Dwarf magazine, not just 40k but anything uh, there that inspired me. I used to really get into the artwork, I used to love artwork, art, I used to love art and design at school and so that side of the hobby. Uh, really was a great inspiration. Maybe you're watching the video at the moment and you're into 40k and it was the artwork that really inspired uh, and got you into the hobby. So that was, that was the situation for me. But it meant like a gradual process of getting into the hobby. Uh, but it was a gradual foundation that became quite a strong foundation because it was constant sort of confirmation, yes, yeah, it's really something uh, I really want to get into. So that was the first step and so for me I encourage you to do the same. Uh, if you're completely new to the hobby, it's just to browse and uh, go down the route of, you know, you can browse on the internet now, you can go to the, uh, the Games Workshop community page or their website and look through the models. Uh, White Dwarf magazine has been resurrected now and uh, is a great magazine once again, very similar to how it was when I first started getting into Warhammer 40,000, so that's great. 
So maybe you, know, you could take out a subscription to White Dwarf magazine if you really start getting into it. And you haven't bought any models, no paints, just appreciating the hobby, uh, just as a bystander for now. So I encourage you to go down uh, that route. It worked really well for me. And uh, check out the comment section below. It may well be the case for many of those watching that are already into the hobby. It was the way that they started and it worked out well for them as well. You know, and I, I still do it now. I, I still Google search Space Marine chapters, Imperial Guard regiments, and look through the artwork, look through models that people have painted out, always looking for inspiration. Um, I, uh, a year or two ago, uh, took a trip to Warhammer World. Obviously, this is now that I'm really into the hobby, but I uh, went to Warhammer World, and that was a massive inspiration. I was quite skeptical of going, I thought, well, I've seen it all. I've seen the models and then went to Warhammer World, you know, someone that's been playing 40k for a, a long, a long, long time. And it was, I was just blown away by the place. It was incredible and spent ages looking at the models. Just, uh, just really inspirational. So very glad that I went. So maybe a trip to Warhammer World uh, would be the catalyst that you need as well. And it'll either confirm that you want to get into the hobby or you might fade away and, and end up doing something else. So that's step number one. Uh, Number two, this may sound a little bit strange again, but it worked for me, uh, and that is don't just do Warhammer 40,000. Um, as I got into 40K, uh, I, was as, as I was talking about earlier on, I was into you know making model kits, you know, World War II stuff. Um, I, my first miniatures for, for, for Warhammer, uh, or for Games Workshop, I think, was actually, I think going all the way back to the very start, was actually uh, old Warhammer stuff, or what's Age of Sigma now, but it was old Warhammer stuff. It was a box of uh, Skeleton Warriors, uh, one of the early plastic kits sets that came out, constructed those. No knowledge of any rules, made up my own rules, played on a Sabutio mat, uh, and just made up my own rules. You know, I was very young at the time. Uh, then I bought I wanted someone to fight the skeletons, so I bought a set of the Outdoor Guard uh, in their red and yellow colour scheme with their red and yellow shields and then the, the Griffin uh, transfer painted that love painted those up, uh, painting those up, really enjoyed painting those. I uh, now I had you know two little factions that I uh, played with and then I had, as I was looking through White Dwarf magazine, I really liked the look of the High Elves, so I painted a few of those just because I like the look of them, and I really enjoyed painting them. I painted a few Dark Elves, uh, and just sort of just started to appreciate uh, the models. So don't just do 40k, uh, but keep yourself open to other options, and also beyond the realm of Games Workshop. So I was talking about uh, collecting military modelling. Uh, I'll, I'll come to this point a bit later on, but I, I started to go to War Games Club and got into historical war game, World War II, uh, 20 millimeter scale, uh, did 15 millimeter Napoleonics, as uh, also American Civil War, all sorts of games are on offer at the local War Games Club, and so it's never just been Warhammer 40,000. It's just always been a love for war gaming in general, uh, and so that's an important point because. As in my journey, there may be times when you, you stop playing 40k for a while, for all sorts of reasons. Um, so what can happen is if you just only Warhammer 40,000 and that falls out of favour for a while, then you can end up just abandoning the hobby. But if you have a broad, a broader spectrum of things that you like within the realm of wargaming, then you may, you may go off Warhammer 40,000 for a while and then you may come back again. You may try something else. It's, I've always been into wargaming in general, uh, and so that's always kept me in the hobby. And if you're always in the hobby, then there's a possibility, or a higher possibility, you're going to end up coming back to Warhammer 40,000 later on, as in my case. I, I got into 40k, went away for a while, and then came back again. Because I was always into wargaming, and on, on the fringe was always Warhammer 40,000, other people playing it, and it was always there in the background, even though I wasn't as involved with it as I was before. So that's point number two, don't just do 40k. Uh, if you ever get inspired by something else, then play it and uh, enjoy it. And uh, I'd, I got into Warhammer 40,000 with my friends uh, at secondary school, and then the gap came when my friends that were into it 
we all left and went in different directions. So I had no, no, no longer didn't really know anybody that was playing Warhammer 40,000, and then I just, just fell out of favour. Uh, but I was still into wargaming, and I stood at the Wargames Club and then started to play historical stuff, uh, all different genres, different gaming systems, and so on. I used to make up my own rules as well for different things uh, at the Wargames Club, and then later on, got back into 40k once again. So that's the second tip. It may sound a strange one, but uh, I'd, I'd really encourage you just to get into wargaming in general, and that's much more likely you're going to stay into it for the long term. And, you know, our tastes uh, change over time, so things fade out of our interest, in and out of our interest, that's just the way life is, and so, uh, as, you know, be prepared for that. You may take a break for 40k and then come back, um, so uh, it's good to have sort of a broader options when it comes to wargaming in general, not just just be 40k and, and then just entirely abandon the hobby, which would be a shame. So uh, that's the two points then. Uh, just browse, number one, on the fringes. There's no harm in doing that. You take as long as you want. Uh, I did take a, a good long while. Uh, and then secondly, don't just do 40k, but uh, get an interest in wargaming in general. There's all sorts of genres out there that you could really enjoy uh, and you won't know unless you keep your options open. Then thirdly, uh, I just said here buy, buy one box of models, but the idea is that you just, uh, it's just your first step. Uh, and so one box of models I've called this point, but that's what I did. I, bu I bought my first set of models. I went into a local, uh, it's like a bookstore, gaming store. Uh, and then I was looking around, I was thinking, right, what, what do I want to buy? And again, I sort of chose a box set that I liked. It was Undead Warriors, Skeleton Warriors, plastic set, had about 40, 50 miniatures in it, uh, all the different poses, uh, and the shields. It's a fantastic set, actually. It was really, really good. Um, uh, and some of the, even some of the models from that are incorporated into some of our 40k terrain, even to this day, and some mixed into some of the ruins and so on. So it was a fantastic set. Really enjoyed painting them up. Uh, and then that was that was really the start of getting deeper and deeper uh, into Games Workshop uh, games that are available. So what, what goes with this, you know, one box of models is to, to paint them up. So I pick up the box, I turn over on the back, and it tells you what kind of paints you need. Uh, and again, no rules. I'm not getting into that. I'm just I'm just trying to appreciate the models and this particular box that I've picked up. So these these are you know, inspired by the actual artwork on the front. Because uh, it was artwork on the front, not a photograph of the models. Turned it over, and the models, I thought, oh, they, look, they look great fun to paint. Uh, here's the paints that you need. So I got the paints. I uh, already had some paints anyway because I was already into constructing model kits and, and painting aeroplanes and so on. So it wasn't too much of a, a blowout on the money to equip myself with all the paints and all the brushes because I already had a lot of resources available already. Um, so got what I needed. Uh, looked up things like basing and flock and stuff because I had an idea of how I wanted to paint them uh, and then just got into the habit of for the most part buying a set and painting a set so I encourage you to do the same buy one box and then paint it up uh, and again this is going to confirm whether you want to get into the hobby or not because now you're at the point where you're painting models constructing models uh, and if you find it miserable then maybe it's time to question whether the hobby is a good idea or not but I, I love building the models models uh, really enjoyed painting them up I'm really satisfied when they were finished uh, and then after that I wanted to get another set of something else and add uh, another like a, a box or something else to fight against these undead warriors so you know I've got a copy of the rule book here and the early pages is sort of similar to what I'm describing to you at the moment so it's you know this kind of thing can put you off you think oh it's a huge collection of stuff it's going to put me off uh, how am I ever going to get to that stage? Um, this Indomitus set, the one that's available at the moment. Uh, but this gives you an idea. You know, basic paints, a few models. So, for example, uh, you go into your games workshop store, uh, or a hobby store, uh, or wherever, or you're browsing on the internet, you're going to order something, just buy one set uh, of models. So a box of ultramarines, you want to paint them up as ultramarines perhaps, whatever you want to do, uh, of intercessors. Uh, and it could be a set of models that you never end up using because they don't really fit in with what you buy in the future, but just buy a set that you like the look of and that you fancy painting them up and you think, oh, they look really cool, I'd love to have those. And then buy that one set, get the paints that you need, and then paint them up. 
and take it from there. If you really enjoy it, then that's a good sign you can carry on. Um, for painting tutorials, uh, there is the resource here on the channel, uh, so you can check that out. Uh, obviously, I've got painting tutorials for everything, but uh, have a look at the painting tutorials there, um, and I, I show you steps of how to paint models uh, to get nice results, but sort of time-saving and effective ways of painting stuff up. So uh, that's a resource for you that's available here on the channel and over on the Plus channel as well. There is uh, also in-depth painting tutorials uh, available. So because it can be a daunting process painting stuff up and you don't want to mess your models up. You want to paint them up well uh, and to do a good job as quickly as you can. So painting tutorials are you know, a great way of, of getting ahead, sort of learning by loads of mistakes. You can just sort of get it right. Uh, in the early stages. So that initial one box, it just grew from there. So I got one box, I got another box. And there's no rules and stuff at this stage, just enjoying the modeling side of the hobby, which is a huge part of, of the hobby. Uh, and so got into that more and more. And I, I sort of, I didn't have rules at the time. I was quite young, so I couldn't just go out and spend a hundred pounds. You know, I was sort of 14, 15 at the time. So I had to be, I had to think carefully about the, the money side of things. Um, so I used to ask for model kits for birthday and Christmas, that kind of thing. Uh, I used to save up my pocket money and get the paints and, and stuff that I needed. So you can work it that way. And even though it's quite a, can be a drawn out process, it can still be very enjoyable. I really enjoyed getting into the hobby and gradually painting stuff up. Because I was quite limited with what I had, I had to appreciate what I had as well. So that can actually be a good thing as well. So that's the third point then, buy one box and then build it, paint it, enjoy it. Uh, and then take it from there. Either you, you give up with it, or you think, yeah, actually, I really enjoyed that, and you press on. So you're building yourself a good foundation, and you're getting into wargaming, you're enjoying all the artwork, enjoying what you see as you browse, then you're buying a box, and you're enjoying that, enjoying uh, constructing it, you're enjoying the painting, you're happy with the results, and you look forward to buying the next set, you're on a, on a, good, on a good path, uh, and sort of heading in the right direction. And again, at this point, it's not cost you very much. Really, you haven't got loads of codexes and rules and huge armies and stuff. You just really have just tiptoed in. And uh, it's I found an enjoyable process and it's not going to cost you too much either. So then number four uh, is to think about getting a, a boxed set. Uh, there's, there's a lot more of this kind of thing available now. Uh, it's a good way of, a really good way of getting into the hobby. So... I don't know if I've got pictures of it here. Yeah. See, there's um, if you go into your hobby store, yeah, you know, the staff are going to help you. Um, and you're presuming now you're at a stage where I'm really enjoying the hobby. I've, I've been looking through the magazines and online. I really like the staff. I've painted up a few box sets, uh, uh, boxes of, of models. Uh, you still really like it. And you think, right? I'd really like to get into this hobby now. I see people using the miniatures in games. And you know you really, really want to uh, play the game yourself. It's that point where you'd, I'd love to play the game. People seem to be having fun, uh, and so I would, I would say a box set is a good idea. Um, now, for example, if you look it up on the Games Workshop website or one of the, the hobby stores, the Indomitus box set that's available at the moment it's a fantastic set. Uh, the cost of it is high enough you know it's just now you're starting to commit quite a bit here but what you get inside is you've got uh, it gives you your rules uh, your counters your dice two factions and the rules for all those factions as well so it's extremely good value actually for getting into the hobby uh, ideally it's something there's there's two armies inside so you, it's something you want to join up with someone else to pair up if you can maybe that's not possible for you so uh, you could paint up both forces or just one and then find uh, someone else to play with at your know, club or uh, game store and so on. But ideally it's a great thing to partner up with or, or both of you chip in and then buy the set. Uh, and again, don't worry about all the big games that people play and the big armies and the collections that people have. You can have just as good fun in a small game of 40k as you can in an apocalypse sized game. Uh, in fact, I would find games of sort of 1500 points, 1500 points at the moment, actually a bit more enjoyable. The bigger games are a bit more taxing, a bit slower. 
uh, a bit more of a tax on the brain, a bit more of a headache. So smaller games uh, can be just as much, if not more fun, than the larger games. So don't worry about getting big into the hobby and huge armies and stacks of models to paint and so on. Uh, but the introduction box sets, not Games Workshop, have also produced uh, actual introduction into the hobby sets. And they've done three levels, if I remember rightly. You can check it out on their website. Um, and so uh, small, medium and large sets that introduce you into the hobby. And again, I'd recommend those. They're quite effective cost-wise. Uh, and it sort of give you all the basics that you need. Some include paints and stuff as well. Uh, but the, I, the Indomitus box set, uh, have a look at that and see what you think. Uh, and again, you may well paint up some of the models and use them a few times and then not end up using them, end up collecting another faction. But it's just to get you into the hobby. Uh, and I find those boxes, I think those box sets are excellent. So that is quite a commitment to get one of those sets. Uh, but You've built it up well enough. You know, you're, you're making an educated decision. You haven't just been, you haven't just gone into a store, uh, and you're thinking about getting into the hobby, and then immediately buy a huge set. I mean, you, this has taken a while to build up to this. You've already painted some models. You have spent your time browsing uh, and thinking about the hobby, and so your commitment's based on a, an educated uh, decision. And so I think that's a safer route to go down. Uh, and I wouldn't say it takes patience because. You just enjoy all the stages as you go along. I, I enjoyed all the, the early stages of getting into the hobby. You know, just embraced and enjoyed each stage as it came along. So starter sets I've put there, or introduction boxes, the next step. Uh, so then I suppose that point of a box set or introduction set it's kind of at the same time as the next point, or you can almost put this next point before uh, the one we've just covered. They sort of work together, and that is uh, look for a local club, gaming store, uh, or games workshop to go to. You know, you're getting into the hobby, you're painting up models, and now you're looking to, to play the game. This is another aspect of the hobby. You know, I really enjoy the modelling aspect of Warhammer 40,000. I love constructing models. Uh, I love writing army lists. Uh, I, I enjoy painting the models, uh, but then another very enjoyable, it should be enjoyable, and it is for me, an enjoyable part of the hobby is the gaming side as well. So this is now you're starting to get into actually, you're starting to build a collection, now you're looking for, for someone to play with. So in my own journey, uh, I've been painting the models up, I've just been sort of uh, playing and some of the models at home, uh, just doing my own thing, writing my own rules and so on, my friends at school. Uh, we used to go to each other's houses and set up a gaming table uh, and then play games just sort of after school, perhaps or on a Friday after school and we were just playing the games and enjoying them. We didn't really know the rules very well but we <laughs> we used to argue and stuff a lot. But uh, it, it was enjoyable, you know, and you're painting stuff up and you're looking forward to the next time you're going to play and you're rushing to get models done, all, all of that enjoyable stuff. So that was a very, very enjoyable time. And, you know, to be honest, half the time our models weren't half painted up, and but we didn't care, it was just, it was just friends uh, playing. So, you know, we didn't expect too much of a high standard. Then it started to get a bit of terrain. I had some model trees that I sort of borrowed from Dad's train set and then I used to make some hills out of polystyrene. I got a piece of ply board six foot by four foot sprayed it green and that was it and that was our gaming table we used to put it on some trestles and we were really well set up then for some games um, so it started to develop and head along in that direction so as uh, playing with friends at school and so on uh, I'm trying to remember what order this happened in I think it was generally the same kind of time I was sort of 14 15 uh, at the time and I said earlier on, my friends headed off in different directions. Stop, some stopped playing 40k. They didn't really like it anymore. As others went off to different, went off to different schools and colleges and so on. So that kind of broke that up. I remember I uh, going back with my dad to uh, that same store where I bought my skeleton box set, and my dad saying, well, "Is there any local clubs uh, that Luke can go to uh, that, that you'd recommend?" And the, the store owner knew the chairman of a local war games club and that club was sswg war games club uh, which our patreon page is set up for you know i joined them as 14 year old uh, just getting into the hobby and they, they've really been an inspiration so that's why that patreon page runs just to appreciate the local war games club that's kept me in the hobby kept my interest has been a, a great platform great place 
uh, to play a variety of games over the years. So, uh, very fond of the club and much appreciates all they've done uh, down through the years. But uh, And they, they've relocated, they've moved to different places over the years and I sort of followed them as they moved around. They stayed local, but it was different places they had to move to uh, over the years. But that's where I was introduced to my local War Games Club. I used to go into local games workshop and that was to browse models and, and look at stuff, but never really played any games there. Uh, but the local War Games Club is you know, a War Games Club, it's going to be there at Cater for Gaming and uh, SSWG always famous for their terrain which I, I really love the idea of that uh, they play every type of gaming system there as well so I've got into all sorts of, of gaming systems but the local war games club uh, or it might be a store that has an area where you can game there's all sorts of different setups that are out there uh, but I encourage you now you're getting into the hobby you're really enjoying it uh, you don't want to burn out because there's no one else to play with and so I know it may not be possible for everybody uh, some people really struggle to find anyone uh, to play games with, but uh, search your local War Games store, War Games club. Might be surprised. There could be one right near you. Don't know about it. Uh, you can Google search it. Search on Facebook. Uh, word of mouth for recommendation. Uh, there's different Facebook groups out there, and so on. There's all sorts of ways you can locate uh, your clubs now. Uh, but uh, it's well worth doing that. They'll introduce you to you know new people to play with, different gaming systems. As I said, you know it's generally war gaming in general uh, that I had an interest in. Uh, and it was there that we really started to play a lot of Warhammer 40,000. We started a league at the club uh, and it just really grew and grew from there and it started to make real sort of 40k terrain. Uh, and then really at the War Games Club there came a point where we started, uh, started to produce videos and then going all the way back to 2011 uh, is where you'll see the start of the channel. And those early games are filmed at SSWG. War Games Club. So, of course, you're at your local Games Workshop store. You know, they have the facilities to play games as well. Um, so, but I, I like the War Games Club because it wasn't a shop. It was just a, a collection of people. So it's, the, the atmosphere is nice and, and relaxed. There's no sales going on. You know, it's just it's out there purely for, for gaming and sort of a very neutral sort of atmosphere. But I very much liked it there indeed. It's sort of a bigger space than the local Games Workshop store as well. The other great thing, with the club, it's one of those one of those clubs where you could lock up uh, at the end of the night, and so you could play a big game, leave it half finished, leave it out, come back to it next week, and it's still there, which is an, a fantastic uh, aspect as well. So search your local gaming club uh, and you know support them, and it, it just really opens the hobby nice and wide for you as well. But again, at the club, I used to look at different games, used to stand on the fringes of games and, and, and observe and browse. Uh, and then again that same kind of process thinking carefully about what to get into and ended up trying out all sorts of different gaming systems as well as Warhammer 40,000. You know it could work out that for example uh, you, you've gone all through the steps I've described to you, you love the artwork and so on, you've painted up a few boxes uh, you start to get into it and you think yeah this is the direction I'm going you join a local war games club and you see the 40k stuff you think oh that's okay and then you look over across the other side of the room and there's some guys playing Lord of the Rings and you go over and you say, wow, this looks really, really good. And then you browse it for a while and you end up, a few years later, you're massively into Lord of the Rings uh, and that gaming system. Keep your options open because you never know what direction you could go in. Um, and so uh, that's one of the great things about local War Games Club. You get to sample the variety and, uh, and different things that people have on offer. So uh, now you're at the point where a lot of people actually dive in at this point. They skip all the points I've just covered. Uh, and this is where you get into uh, starter sets, collecting a whole army, uh, rules, dice, codexes, cards, and all of that stuff. This is the expensive part now. You, you think, right, this is the faction. I'm gonna go for Necrons. So then you buy a stack of Necron stuff to build your army. You need the Necron codex, the Necron cards. Uh, it's, all, 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 all of that kind of stuff and so this is a bigger financial commitment now this is like a, a, a larger sized army you know 2000 points for example uh, and all the equipment that you need for that uh, but before you come to that so that's the last point is to, is to get all of those things starting 40k you're going to need all of that stuff you're going to need your codex uh, to get all the units the data cards are very very useful I really would recommend you get them uh, your rule book uh, and then your army but that's the final point 
as I said, many people start at that point, but I'm not saying it's a mistake. You, you may well just jump straight in and enjoy it straight away, but I've known many people have jumped in, jumped out again, and it's cost them dearly uh, because 40K is not the cheapest of hobbies to get into. So that's the final step. Uh, and then once you're at that stage, now you're, you're not starting 40K, you're really into it. Uh, once you start getting armies, you know, and then you finish an army like I did, and then you like the look of another army, another army, and now it's the point where I'm 16, 17 armies later, I'm still <laughs> open to suggestions for for other armies as well. And the interest is still there, uh, but still keeping enjoyment and fun at the heart of it, and that's that's the key for, for hobbyists. Uh, so, you know, some people say to me, you can do Age of Sigma, oh, you can do this, I can do that, but I just don't really have interest in those. I'm sure they're great gaming systems, but the interest isn't there. And so why do something you're not interested in? Uh, so I don't want to go down that route of feeling I have to collect something. Uh, I'd just rather just keep it as the hobby. And so I enjoy 40k and uh, plan just to continue on uh, with that for now at least. So I really hope that's helped you. That's my journey and it was an enjoyable journey. And it's, you know, 20, I think now 20 years later, still into the hobby. So I think that counts for something. Uh, and so just to recap those points again, and I'm presuming you're just completely new to you. Perhaps you play the computer games and then you think, oh, I'd love to get into the hobby, what do I do? Um, or perhaps you're a few stages on. So number one uh, is browse on the fringes of the hobby. Perhaps get a magazine, a brochure, and just flick through it, enjoy the artwork and so on, flick through the internet uh, and be inspired and take your time in that route. So that's number one. Uh, then as uh, number two as uh, buy a box set uh, and the relevant paints and so on and just paint that box set up and enjoy it and that'll be a confirmation for you if you're going to continue or not uh, then thirdly don't just do 40k keep your own your eyes open for other gaming systems and other things that might inspire you try out different things uh, but try and be a war gamer not just 40k but a war gamer in general uh, and that keeps your options open. It means that if you fade out of the out of 40k, there's a higher chance you'll fade back into it again. Uh, then, uh, as number four, a starter set or a box set. I'm recommending the Indomitus box set. Fantastic box set. Uh, but there's others out there, all sorts available now. Um, so that's number four. Number five, uh, look for your local war games club. Uh, it's, that's a great way for inspiration, encouragement, and uh, for help getting into hobbying, into the rules and so on. Uh, that's what I looked into and found a really good board games club and, and haven't looked back since. Uh, it's been a roller coaster ride, it's been ups and downs of the club, they've had their troubles and, and struggles, but they've kept going and it's been a great resource. And then lastly, uh, then really get into hobbies, there's your codex, cards, rules, larger army and so on, and then now you're fully immersed in the hobby. But that's my tips and my experience of how to get into Warhammer 40,000. I hope that's been a help to you. If uh, It'd be great to hear the journeys of others who've got into 40k. Maybe you went down the same route as me, slightly different, maybe you jumped in. Uh, whatever your experience has been, leave that in the comments section below. Uh, please like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really just helps the video and helps the channel out. It's much appreciated. Uh, and then check out the comments section, see what other hobbyists are saying. Uh, and you know, it's great to hear advice guidance from others uh, who have been there before us <laughs> so that's the video keep a look out for more how-to videos for hammer 40,000 thanks for watching and tune in next time